loads of football on this weekend and I think what would be most interesting to people is seeing can Corfin keep this going or not because they've won 14 of the last 22 Galway County titles and in some ways that probably stifles everyone else and I know we mentioned Frankie Donald last week you know and that he was managing against St Bridget's with Western Gales but um, Mount Bellew Mile Lock are against Carfin this weekend and they're managed by a man that played on the Carfin team that won it in 1998 um, Michael Donlan so uh, Mount Bellew they've lost three of the past four finals all to Carfin so you'd expect they're going to have it all to do here. The only thing that I have, have heard about Carfin is that they haven't had their full 15 out. And is it a case, are they going to parachute the star players back in and hope that it all kind of gels? Yeah, it's, it's a difficult one. See, when a team like that is exerting so much power in a county, there's such an aura about them. Mm. But now, it can work two ways. Either it stifles the opposition or teams start raising their game against them. Now, Mount Bellew are definitely, like they were beaten after a replay a couple of years ago. Remember, Corrifin worked that great score to get the drawn score yeah. a couple of, in a really, really low scoring game. Very, so very, um, I think a lot of the Mount Bellew people were fairly annoyed with the amount of extra time that was given. I think there was like, there was supposed to be maybe two minutes and there was like three and a half minutes added on. Yeah, so like they're the team that has been closest to, to ending, that, ending that great reign. It's probably not a bad thing to get them in a quarter final, mm. to be honest. But Particularly if you were saying they haven't had their best 15 available. Maybe, they're, maybe a, we've been smarter, I've seen it happen before. Maybe a couple of lads will get a chance, maybe that wouldn't normally get a chance. And maybe they'll be found out somewhat or the team can go on target and might have, actually have someone that they can target now um, to get a bit of joy out. But it's still very, very difficult to see Corrafin being beaten. Very difficult. I wonder does Dahi Burke go into the team? Like there's so much class in that Corrafin side, you know, Martin Farrer, Gary Sice, Liam Silk. I mean, they're, they're, you could just Jeremiah. name yeah, like yeah, you could name them all day. Sure, they're but more or less an inter-county team. But the, the feeling in Galway, and this is from talking to Galway people, is that Carfin's biggest challenge is actually within the county. I mean, every team finds their own county championship very difficult to win, yeah. even if they are going for seven in a row, which hasn't been done since Toome, I think, in 1954 well, to 60. I'll, I'll put it this way. When Burr were winning Club Ireland's, Remember one year beat Rhinus by a pint in the county final, like literally scraped mm. over the line. It could have been the same year. No, it was a different year. Uh, Drew a Coleri, uh, 113 apiece in the semi final, got away with absolute murder, had a man sent off yeah. the same day. Now beat them well in the replay. But you have, I remember Borough won a club all Ireland in 95, having won a playoff to get back into the knockout stages against Rhinus. Like yeah. that's the way, that's the way it goes. Like. Yeah, and, and even when we won the All Ireland with Kula a couple of years ago, I think we didn't beat anyone in Dublin by more than a, a score, and maybe one team by two scores. And then once we got outside, we actually won a lot of the games. Well, so it's it's um, it's one of these recurring things. But within Galway, if you just look at the last few years, in 2015, Tume Stars drew with Carfin and lost the replay. 2017, Anna Down lost the semi final by a point. That would be uh, Damien Comer's team. And then 2018, obviously, you just mentioned Mount Bellew that they drew the final and lost the replay. So the teams are coming close, and I think Mount Bellew are going to sit back, 14 men behind the ball, try and sicken Carfin here. But I, you'd still imagine with all that class that Carfin will just edge them. But I do agree with what you're saying. Good time to catch him. Uh, so Salt Hill knocked the carrier against Clare Galway as well. Tumor against Spidale, and uh, there's plenty of relegation games on in Galway also. Spidale are like uh, Ornmore Marie in the hurling. Mm. They came up from intermediate last year. Were they beaten in an Ireland intermediate final or semi final? They were thereabouts, I think. I don't think they won it, but they were thereabouts. And they've continued on. It's amazing when you get on a run, even coming up from a lower grade. They've continued it on. And Clara did it in Kilkenny Hurling a couple of years ago. They've continued it on. I think they might be unbeaten at this stage, throughout the group stage. I think they are. Either that or they've won three out of four, something like that. Claire Galway came through the intermediate. They were there a couple of years ago. I remember, they were in, I remember they were in the Connacht Championship, and uh, Danny Cummins is on that team pace merchant altogether. Uh, the Donegal Senior Football Championship, Paddy McGill from Ocean FM was giving me a couple of, a bit of the background on this and he said the final round of the group games this, this weekend and quarterfinals the next weekend. Five different winners in the past five years and he, and he was suggesting that only Wexford football would have the similar uh, record that very, very competitive. So Gwydor are the Ulster champions and the uh, got into the All-Ireland semi-final, so they're they're not necessarily the favourites. Kilcar are in there, you know, the McHughes and the McBearities. I was up watching them a couple of years ago. I was up covering a game with Air Sport. Do you know, like, it was pretty good football. Yeah, like, no, because no, no. Donegal has this reputation of being dour, whatever I thought was very good. Uh, Someone said to me before, actually, even around the McGuinness time, they were, like, wondering why Donegal were playing a certain way. Mm. And I think there's some merit to it, actually. 
like when you're playing on the that kind of western kind of northwestern coast and there's all sorts of breezes and things coming in it is does tend to be a possession style game you play sure, because it's coming in sideways yeah actually, sure, when yeah. you if you go and kicking the ball like it's a lot of the time you're just kicking it away like you don't really know where you're kicking mm-hmm. it so a lot of those teams do play a kind of a possession style and it's probably natural that they do mm-hmm. given the conditions they're playing it yeah so good oracle car glenties they're all going to be uh, up there in terms of teams challenging for it there's talk that the quarters are going to be live on tv so we'll see about that uh, Roscommon Championship, Clonagale against St. Crohn's. I said that Clonagale would win this handy. They actually drew. They drew, and so it's a, it's a relegation semi replay. Uh, Clonagale haven't had a good year. It's not like they're missing anyone. So it's a, it's a very strange one from uh, from their point of view. When you sometimes when you win a county final, though, like there can be a bit of a hangover, yeah. and yeah, like th- they should be they should be coming through that. But as we said before, once you get into that kind of a quagmire, it can be very very difficult mm-hmm. to get out. of. Uh, the Fermanagh f- final is on this weekend. It's on, going to be on TG Carr, Derry Gonnelly against Ross Lee. Battle of the two recent powerhouses because uh, Derry Gonnelly now, they're looking for five in a row. And before that, it was it was Ross Lee winning in like 2010, 13, sorry, 11, 13 and 14. So just in terms of who people would know from the Derry Gonnelly side, it'd be Ryan Jones, Conal Jones, Garvin Jones, Im McHugh and Shane McGullion. It's a tiny village outside in a skill and it's kind of like one or two pubs and that's about it. But, it. but it covers a big area. You often have that. We're a tiny place, yet you cover a huge distance and, and a load of houses. So I think it might be one of those situations. Ross Lay, of course, have the two Quigleys. Sure, who could, who could forget Seamus Quigley? His performance against Dublin, remember the time he pushed Stephen Cluxton over the line right, and somehow yeah. got a goal, that was hilarious. And uh, who was it against that time where he said on TV afterwards he had a pizza the night before <laughs> in Monaghan at two in the morning? That's right, yeah, it was a couple of years ago. I think it was last year he started an Ulster Championship game. I think it was his first championship start for Fermanagh, if I do remember right. Every game he had come on, even that Dublin game, Joe Referente, he came on as a sub that day, Seamus Quigley. Um, yeah, he, I think his first championship start was last year. I remember chatting Declan Bogue about it. Oh, am I mixing yeah. them up? I think Sean is the guy who ate the, at the pizza then, is mm, it? No, I think it was Seamus. All right, now, Seamus, now you're yeah. confusing yeah. me. Yeah, no, well well done on that. Fairly sure it was Seamus. Um, again, I, I, lo- I love lads like that. Like Rory Gallagher was saying last year, I think, I think Seamus was dropped off the panel for one of their games last year. And I think it was a, a discipline breach or something like that. And Rory Gallagher was asked about it after, and it was kind of like, we, you know, we love Seamus, but we, you know, we can't have different rules for different yeah. lads or whatever. Like it we, was Seamus. I'm yeah, sure. he's he's one of those kind of characters. Um, just just on that as well, I was actually just reading something um, from an article that Johnny Pilkington did back. It was before one of the Leinster finals against Kilkenny, and this game it just goes back to the game's kind of great characters. He said like how often we were taking the game so seriously, you know, training twice a week, and he said like I think. The, inter- the interview was put in the Saturday paper and he said, you know, and some of the boys have been off the beer since Tuesday. Like, It's just, um, these boys are the game's great characters. Um, Ross Lair on the Monaghan border and like, couple, the Sherry brothers, James and Peter Sherry, they moved up to Dublin too. Imagine if they were Castle still Lock, in there. Yeah, Castle yeah. Lock, yeah. Uh, I, I'm feeling one of them didn't play for Castle Lock. I'm trying to remember, was it Plunkett's maybe? Uh, Tyrone Championship on this weekend, couple of big games there. Trillick against Clano. Trillick are expected to win that one. Uh, Matty Donnelly and, and Richie Donnelly leading the charge there. Cole Island against Killy Clower. Cole Island slight favourites there. Uh, Cavan quarter final replay here. So some of the other quarter finals have been played, and I get to them. But uh, Castle Rahan against Killy Gary. So they drew one seven each. Killy Gary did all the played all the football and uh, won four to two points up at half time. So Castle Rahan are the, the title holders. They'd lost three finals before that. So Keen Mackey's Keen Ma- is the key man. Ushin Kieran and who everyone knows came back from cancer to play for Cavan this year. So you'd fancy Castle, Ra- Castle Rahan this time. And they'd play Kevin Gales in the semi-finals. Kevin Gales had Ronan Clark over the team, the Arma man. Oh, yeah. He was over the team, and he left after a group status. So no real talk publicly as to why, but um, there's a talk. Mickey Graham took one of their training sessions. Then in the other quarter-final, Crosser Lock hammered Lavi, and they'll play Rammer. So uh, then just on Kevin Gales as well. Shawnee Johnson didn't play with uh, didn't play with Kevin this year. He didn't retire or anything like that. Mm. But. Uh, I, I think he did, but he didn't put it out there or anything like that. He, he's after breaking his arm, so he's not. Oh, yeah, he's massive not, loss. He won't be playing now, but uh, I think he might be involved in the coaching. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a huge loss for them because mm. he was putting up. He like for 15 years he's been putting up massive tallies. Yeah. Then in the in the Cork Championship this weekend, uh, Douglas against Ballancolic. 
do Hallow against uh, Clonakilty and Nemo Rangers against St. Bars. Now, the reason that I, I'd stop on this one for a second is Nemo Rangers, course class team, got to an all, all Ireland final a couple of years ago against Bars, obviously a massive side. But Billy Morgan, I, I was interviewing Billy Morgan, the famous uh, former Cork goalkeeper and manager. Yeah. Don't get much bigger. But he told me a great story, and it was when he was playing in goals for Nemo, and it was the 1979 Club All Ireland final against Scotstown at Croke Park, and he said it was a freezing day. But uh, I just dug out the quotes, and he goes, "It was so cold that myself and Frank Hogan had a bottle of brandy, and we took a sip, a sip each before we went out. I don't know if Dinny Allen even drank at the time, but he said, "Give me a sup of that." We came in and had a sup at half time too. There were times in that game that I could hardly see to, uh, to the other goal because of the blizzard, but we won and comfortably in the end. So they won that two nine three points. You can't beat that. Can you? No, it was actually a great story about um, Noel skiing. They were playing All-Ireland Final against Cork one year. And he was down the Davin stand end. And someone threw in an apple. Yeah, they threw in an apple from there. I don't know like whether they were throwing it at him or I don't know what. Yeah. But um, someone asked him after, like, what was the story with the apple? And he just goes, I oh, had a bite. <laughs> and he goes, Pat Henderson, he had a bite. And then he just threw the apple away, like just <laughs> some of the stuff. Which like. is a fair answer from uh, Clare Championship this weekend. I had a tweet in from Donald Fitzpatrick in, in the football, and he goes, "The Cratlow versus Ennis Diamond football quarterfinal in Clare is noteworthy for the fact that a slew of intercounty players on show, mostly Cratlow, but also Cahill Malone and Davy Fitz uh, for Ennis Diamond." better known for Hurland so obviously Cratlow with the likes of Podge Collins uh, playing on their team Colin McInerney one that of the great kind of dual counties to be fair a lot of them would play mm. Hurland and football the majority of them would but does that happen too when your county isn't overly strong obviously Clare got to, won the All-Ireland in 2013 got to a semi-final in 18 but when you don't have massive numbers and you know like if you're concentrating on one court in a big county that tends to rule you out for playing the other sport Whereas in a smaller sort of county, you're like, we only have so many prime athletes and we might need to juggle them over and back as best we can. That's a fair point. It happens in Wexford as well. Like, Wexford is probably, outside of Cork, I'd say Wexford is probably the biggest, I just believe mm. Wexford is probably the biggest dual county in Ireland, actually, because nearly every club, the majority of clubs are dual. Like, mm. So, yeah, I know it's a fair point. It probably does happen in counties where the numbers aren't maybe as plentiful as others. Um, Carlow Championship then is the last thing we'll touch on. Bagnallstown Gales are playing against uh, the Champions Air Oak on Sunday. But on Saturday, Ratvilly against Palatine. So everyone will know Brendan Murphy from, from Ratvilly. Palatine, they were playing against the underdog team on TG Carr there the other night and gave them a right spanking. So I was thinking, I don't know how on earth this underdog team is going to take on whatever outfit Mayo put out. Yeah, I was chatting to Mickey Ned about it last week because I was doing a feature on Donny Buckley and I wanted to chat him about it. And he seemed to think the cute... Kerry isn't, I suppose, he seemed to think that they were. I said, what are the underdogs like this year? And Mickey said, they're not too bad. You know, <laughs> no. they'll surprise a few people. But I, like, I have to say, I wasn't overly impressed by them. Yeah, no, like last year they got, they got an awful tanking against Dublin. Yeah. I actually went into it and the game was over after 15 minutes. Mm. Against the Dublin side, which I don't think, was it, Johnny Johnny Cooper and all Merchant started, apart from that, maybe Darren Gavin featured at some stage this year. Like, so it was a pure understrength team. But um, you don't know whether... T- it's a good thing for Palatine or not. You think, oh, they're flying it or the underdogs are really bad. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, that's it for the club football talk. If there's anything that you think we should be touching on, please uh, send a message to me at Shane Saint on Twitter at MLVerney to Michael as well. And don't forget to subscribe by clicking on that icon to the right there.